Okay, hi everybody. My name is um, Shedra Kakintayo. I am a community manager for EBPF and Cilium at Isovalent. And um, today we are basically going to talk about um, Cilium Hubble. So the title of my talk is What's Going On Within My Network? Um, a soft introduction to Cilium Hubble. So quickly, we are going to cover these um, topics. Um, EBPF, Cilium, Hubble, you know, Hubble architecture. We're going to like go a bit deeper into like um, the structural components of Hubble. Um, before I start, like, is anybody here that knows Cilium or EBP EBPF? If you do, can I see your hand? Okay, nice representation, nice. Awesome, awesome. So let's just get started so I don't take too much of your time. So um, in terms of observability, right, um, in the cloud native space, for example, right, um, there are a bunch of things that we consider. Um, I like to classify them in three levels. Um, secu application level observability, operations level observability, and um, security observability. So for the application level, we're talking about things like performance metrics, like you know, things that make your, um, um, the metrics based on your application performance, then logs, traces. Then for the operation level, we're talking about like you know, in, t in a Kubernetes context, context, we're talking about cluster health, resource um, utilization, scaling events, etc. Then for um, security um, observability, we're talking about network traffic and access logs. So all of these are like some of the things we consider when talking about observability in the cloud native space. Um, this is what brings us to like, you know, the agenda for today. Cilium, EBPF, and Hubble. So these are like the three, some of the three things I'm going to be talking about today, and um, I hope it's like, you know, gets you excited. So let's talk about EBPF. So it um, looks like, you know, from the question I asked earlier, a, lot of, a bunch of us have experienced or heard about you know, eBPF. So for those of us that have not you know, heard about eBPF, eBPF is basically um, a technology that allows you to basically instrument code into the Linux kernel without exactly affecting the kernel in any way. So you can basically send things like applications, et cetera, into the Linux kernel without making any form of changes to the you know, Linux kernel. So um, eBPF is like really, really popular these days. And, um, um, so there's like various use cases for eBPF, which we're going to talk about later in the, um, in the talk. Then also, like a bunch of projects already existing um, in the uh, eBPF landscape. So if you see the um, diagram I have here, uh, it basically just represents like eBPF, the uh, um, user space, the kernel, like what the current architecture, what it looks like, and then um, some of the use cases, which is mostly around networking, security, and observability. Like, there are other use cases for EBPF, right? But today, we're just going to be talking about like, networking, security, and observability. So basically, one of the um, interesting part of EBPF is I personally think EBPF, EBPF has been a revelation for the cloud native space because we have, like in the past few years, we've had a bunch of um, tools that have been created based on EBPF. Um, this is because of setting you know, um, characteristics or setting advantages like um, the performance, so it reduces the performance overhead. Then you know it gives you because of how close EBPF brings you to the kernel, it gives you deep um, insights into your application, or you know gives you deep observability. Then you know it is widely available, meaning it's like you know standard, standardized across all modern Linux systems. Then um, in terms of like um, tools in the cloud native space that are using eBPF at the moment. Um, we have Parker, which is like a continuous profiling tool. Then we also have Cilium, which handles like um, you know networking observability and security. Then Cilium Hubble, which is also a part of Cilium, uh, that is the observability layer of Cilium. Then Tetragon, which is the security layer of Cilium. So what is Cilium? So basically, Cilium um, is created by Isovalent, the company I work at. We are currently like the creators of EBPF and Cilium. Um, Cilium is mostly used around networking, security, observability, um, service mesh, and ingress. And it's currently a CNCF graduated project. Um, I think it got in, I think graduation last year, um, which is a really, really cool thing. Then in terms of technology, Cilium is mostly built on top of EBPF and Envoy. Um, and it basically provides um, Security then allows you to observe your, ne um, your network connectivity between log workloads and, you know, like I said earlier, it's built on top of eBPF. So today, the main focus for today is Cilium Hubble, which is like 
authority layer for Cilium. It is a fully distributed networking and security vulnerability platform, which is open source. Um, it is built on top of Cilium and eBPF, and it is currently, you can use Hubble in like two, three ways, in two ways. Um, we have the Hubble CLI, which allows you to, let's just say, I would say, I like to call it like, you know, a high budget TCP, TCP dump. So think about TCP dump, but better, right? Then um, it basically allows you to connect to the Hubble API and then render some of your flow events to your CLI in a really, I would say it's really, really nice compared to like, you know, experience with TCP dump. Then, um, it gives you also a UI for some of us that are much more interested in the graphical aspect of things. Like, not everybody likes to look at, you know, um, the green screen of the or the black screen of the terminal, depending on whatever color is your terminal. Um, so it gives you also a UI that you can see, like a service map of all your um, all your services and pods talking together. I would also demo that later in the talk. Then. What can Hubble do for you, right? Um, so Hubble provides, you know, metric collection, including L7 metrics. Um, so ideally, a lot of observability tools can mostly do um, metric collection at the L3 and L4 layer, which is like, you know, IPs, ports, etc. But with Hubble, Hubble comes like an added benefit, which is L7 uh, metrics. Then it also provides your network flow, so you can see the communication, the flow of the communication between all your pods, services, etc. then a good thing about Hubble is if you want to, you know, if you already use open telemetry or any form of distributed tracing tool, you can take your, your metrics generated by Hubble and then render it on those, um, and then display it on those tools, for example, Grafana. So which is leads us to um, visualization with Grafana. So you can also take the metrics produced by Hubble you can take it and then this creates really, really good, nice dashboards on Grafana. So where can Hubble help? So like, there are certain questions that Hubble can answer for you in several categories. Um, in ser for service dependencies and dependencies, Hubble can, act, can help you answer what services are communicating with each other, like how frequently, and you know, what does the, the service dependency graph look like? Hubble can help you see what HTTP calls are being made. This is thanks to the L7 visibility it gives you, and you know some of your Kafka um, um, topics. So, in terms of networking and monitoring, Hubble can I uh, can show you where some certain communications are failing in your network, um, what communication itself is failing, and then is it DNS? I mean, it's always DNS, right? It can help you answer that particular question. Then it can also tell you which of these services has experienced issues with DNS. So Hubble gives you the answer to is it DNS, which is a really, really cool thing if you ask me. Then um, for application monitoring, it can you know, show you the HTTP, um, HTTP status code for whatever you know, request you make. Then um, it can also show you like latency between you know, HTTP requests. So Hubble gives you this full-blown observability layer for your cloud-native applications. Um, and then it also shows, you know, in terms of security, which is one of the things I talked about earlier as like things you know you consider for vulnerability. Um, it answers like you know what services had connection blocked due to network policy. Um, this is really really interesting because I've had people ask me, you know, over the years, like, what, how do you know your network policy is working? Like, how do you know? So Hubble can help you answer this particular question. For example, if you do a network, if you if you create a network policy that maybe does a default deny, like you no know, ingress and egress, like everything, all the traffic is dropped, Hubble can show you the uh, a flow of like you know all these traffic's being dropped, um, which is also one of the, some of the things I will demo today. Then um, also, which services have resolved a particular you know DNS name. So Hubble is pretty pretty has a really really interesting architecture. Uh, that consists of several things. For, um, the first, the, one of the interesting parts is the Cilium agent. So um, Hubble runs the Cilium agent, which acts as a CNI, to manage the connectivity for all CNI um, managed Kubernetes pods. So every single pod that you have um, Cilium running, um, Hubble can basically um, get the get, get a lot of information from the Cilium agent already running in those pods. Then um, the Hubble server, which runs on each of your nodes in your cluster and retrieves the eBPF-based visibility from Cilium, 
right? So this is like you know, the interesting part. This is where those, I, I like to call it the engine, right? This is what takes all those VPF metrics and gives you like you know visibility. Then Obu then exposes um, gRPC services from the Cilium process that allows you know clients to receive flows and other type of data. And um, the Hubble relay is basically there, which is also one very important part of, um, of Hubble. It's basically there to provide you full network visibility across your entire, your entire cluster and across multiple clusters. So how does Cilium, EBPF, and Hubble basically, how, like, what's the relation, correlation between um, um, all these particular you know, components? So Cilium, the Cilium agent attaches eBPF programs to all Kubernetes pods. Then the Cilium, Cilium basically subscribes to the Kubernetes API for, related on, for updates on like certain resources. So this is where the metric, the metric starts to be like, you know, start getting generated. Then Cilium converts those resources that it has received into BPF map for EBPF data part, for the EBPF data parts across like access across the entire cluster. Then the EBPF data part inspects incoming connection to the pods. So if you look at the diagram, you can see that there's a Cilium monitor there, which basically helps you know, um, the EBPF inspect incoming connections to the pods. Then the EBPF data, um, data part emits traces and policy events. All these are like the metrics that's collected, and then pushes it to a BPF map, which acts as a you know, ring buffer. Um, so now, Hub, now this is where the metrics have been generated. Now, Hubble needs to take those metrics and make it sensible to you, right? Makes it make you have access to these metrics. So, a Hubble instance reads that. Um, Hubble instance running inside the Cilium agent reads that particular data from the BPF map, and then collects networking events, storing them in a historical buffer, so you can always access them. So Hubble has a limit to which it can. Um, give you certain um, uh, metrics based on the amount of a specific period of time. So Hubble then exposes the collected data through gRPC and metrics like with the Hubble API. Then the data is now accessible um, across other components like the Hubble UI, you know, taking it to Prometheus and you know, getting monitoring and then for your analysis. So basically, this is now the time where you can actually export those metrics to maybe the Hubble UI or maybe um, if you want, uh, you can take it to uh, Prometheus and Grafana. Then Hubble has a bunch of components. Like if you've um, Throughout the talk, I've been talking about like you know Hubble UI, um, Hubble metrics, Hubble CLI. Like so, what like what are these tools? Like what are these components? So the Hubble CLI gives you detailed flow visibility in your um, in your terminal by just running a command, Hubble observe. It also allows you to do extensive filtering, so you can do filter based on um, um, you want to get net um, network traffic for certain pods in the namespace, you want to get based on certain labels, you want to get based on certain um, criteria. You can do that um, with the Hubble um, um, CLI. Then um, if you are more of a, a, like you need to export the data, you can also get your network traffic in JSON. Um, I would show um, how you can do that. Then for the Hubble UI, it basically provides a graphical you know, interface for all your network traffic, and basically every single thing that, all the metrics that Hubble gives you, it, you can basically um, render all those with the Hubble UI. And um, it gives you flow display and also filtering, same thing you can get in the CLI, but this time in a much more graphical you know, format. And also you can see your network policies, how they are working in real time, so you can see your network policies. And then for Hubble metrics, so this is basically the engine for generating metrics. And um, with the Hubble metrics, you can then you know, export most of your data to um, via Prometheus and Grafana and all the, any other open telemetry um, tool. Then for the Hubble CLI, this is what the Hubble CLI looks like. Um, it basically gives you information on, um, on the network and application level. And also, you can see things like you know your TCP connection, DNS queries. Um, you can see Kafka communication and so much more, like with the Hubble CLI. And um, you can also carry extensive filtering. So if you look at, I'm not sure this is visible enough, but if you look at the diagram, you can see that I am basically filtering based on certain labels. 
You can also filter based on, you know, port, ports, services, IP addresses, if you, you know, if that's what some of what you're looking for. And also, you can use some HTTP methods, like if you want to see all the GET requests, all the um, POST requests that you're having, you can also see that with the um, Hubble CLI. And for JSON, if you wish to, if you wish to render your network traffic to JSON, you can just run Hubble Observe and add the flag dash O JSON, and it's going to render every single traffic that you have currently in JSON, which you know it's really really useful. So for the Hubble UI, the Hubble UI basically provides a you know graphical interface where you can see all your network flow traffic in one dashboard. Um, it also gives you the visualization with service maps, and then you can filter network party traffic by verdicts. Verdict meaning um, is this connection dropped? You know, is this connection allowed, etc. You can filter by those on the Hubble UI. Then you can easily also switch between namespaces in your cluster. So in your cluster, you, if you have like you know multiple namespaces in your cluster, you want to see traffic going on in those particular. You can switch with the Hubble UI between those clusters and see how things are you know functioning or what, how the connection is going overall. So for Hubble metrics, Hubble metrics basically um, exposes a metric endpoint, which can be scraped. You know, for something like um, um, Prometheus, um, you can scrape those metrics and you know use it however you wish to use it. Then it also has certain beauty metrics like um, HTTP, TCP, you know, UDP, DNS, ICMP. You know, and another good thing about Hubble is that you can write your own metrics. It's customizable and extensible, so you can write your own metrics. So if you have certain things that you want to look for, you want to um, filter based on, you can write your own metrics. And you can also visualize this data from the Hubble metrics with Grafana. If, like, you know, Grafana is one of, like, the most pop one of the popular tools for like, you know, visualizing and you know, creating dashboards in observability. So if, you, if that's more of your thing or what you're already using, um, Hubble already has, like, you, know, you can do that directly on you know, Grafana. So this, is, this diagram basically showcases um, 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 Hubble and you know, the whole hubble prometheus Grafana relationship. So it's basically a Grafana um, server with a data source um, pointing to Prometheus and um, also with um, L7 HTTP metrics from Hubble. So Grafana has a data source plugin for Hubble. So you can have this done um, on your dashboards, or on Grafana dashboards. So um, I've talked, I've spoken a lot, <laughs> so maybe it's time for us to see, like, you know, um, Hubble in, in action. So let me just switch this. I need to figure out how to switch this to, okay, one minute. Okay, so if we can just switch this here. Okay. Hey, have this. So this basically is um, a demo I prepared for this session. And you can also find out GitHub, which I will share the link later. I just need to get my terminal here. Not really fun of these things. OK. OK. Can you, can you see my terminal? Is it visible enough? Okay, 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 cool. Um, so the um, so the first thing we need to do is like you know I have currently have a kind cluster with two um, worker nodes and one um, control plane currently running. So if you want to also follow along, you know this would be really really interesting to do. Uh, so one minute. Uh, okay. Sorry, is there a way I can mirror my screen? Like, I, I'm not, I don't like extending it. Like, technical support, is there any way I can mirror my screen? Uh, okay. 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 It's like I've, oh, go, cool. All right, found that. So, the first thing we need to do is to create a client call star running um, with um, um, two worker nodes and one control plane. So, I currently have that running. So if I do a cut kind config, do I mail? So I currently have that particular running here. 
And I have also disabled the default CNI because, you know, Cilium, um, Hubble is a component of Cilium. And, you know, if you want to uh, bring a CNI, you have to disable, you know, the default CNI that comes with you know, Kubernetes. Then the next thing we need to do is to install Cilium. Um, it's always advisable to install the stable version, which is version 1.15. So if I check my Cilium installation, hopefully I'm following best practices. Yeah, I currently have Cilium version 1.15 um, running. And then the next thing we need to do is to check if Cilium is, um, you know, after the installation, is to check if Cilium is ready. So we can do that with Cilium status. So it says, like, you know, Cilium is OK, Operator is OK, and then also Hubble Relay is OK. This is because I've enabled Hubble earlier because, you know, conference Wi-Fi is not the best thing to demo on. Uh, so the next thing is also to enable Hubble, which I have done already. So you use Cilium um, enable Hubble. So to check if you know, your Hubble installation is, like, you know, running properly, you can just do Hubble status. If you check that, you can see that, yeah, it's connected on all three nodes, and those, this also flows. There's also the health check says, OK, so we are good to go. Then to make sure that, like, you know, pods, pods are not crash, um, clashing, we need to port forward Hubble in a separate tab, which I have basically done here. So this basically is what is going to act as like, our server for Hubble Relay. So I have basically done that here with kubectl port forward, then you know the Hubble Relay service. After that, we then need to opt, um, enable Cilium Hubble UI, which is um, basically done. So you, need, you can do this with Cilium Hubble enable dash dash UI, and I have done that at the moment. So if I go to my Cilium, I can see that Cilium Hubble UI is running. The next thing we need to do is to start Hubble UI. So I have that already running. So if I let me just kill the server, then run Cilium Hubble again. Hubble UI. Hopefully nothing breaks. <laughs> OK. Awesome. So we currently have, so this is what the Hubble UI looks like. And um, it's like I said earlier, it gives you access to all the namespaces in your pod, so you can switch between certain namespaces. So currently, I have um, you know the regular you know um, um, namespaces, and I also have the default namespace, which is mostly where we're going to be doing a lot of the uh, demo. So I'm just going to um, um, leave this open. Um, so now nothing is rendering because we've not made any form of you know, um, requests, you know, there's no traffic, there's nothing going on. So we need to find a way to get this to pick up a request, you know, let's, let's simulate traffic. So the next thing to do that, we need to deploy an application, right? And um, we cannot, there's no demo with an application. So let's deploy an application. So I can do that by just running. I already have the application installed on my, um, the application um, YAML file already on my machine. So I can just do kubectl fly f yml. So it's basically, you know, two applications. So if I, let's just see what that looks like. Nothing special, nothing too um, complex, just regular. So we have like um, a deployment with like uh, of one application with an nginx image, and also the same thing with an, also another nginx image with like one replica each. The next thing we need to do for that is to check that yeah every pod is running, so we can do that with get pods and it's still creating. Hopefully this creates fast enough. Okay. Okay, there's no wait flag. Okay. So we have to wait a bit for that. <laughs> Hopefully the Wi-Fi lets us. Okay. Wi-Fi lets us let's start create. Okay, it's still creating. The containers are still creating. Sorry guys. The Wi-Fi is not great. <laughs> okay. This is taking too long. 
<laughs> I probably should have done this earlier, but yeah, I wanted to, to like take everybody along. Um, so for the next step, we would be exposing, um, rolling out the deployment, exposing the deployment to make sure that like we're going to be exposing the deployments. Then we're going to go into one of the pods and then making a call request to simulate some traffic and see if Hubble picks that for us. Then um, we're going to also apply a network policy, a Cilium network policy, to drop traffic, to drop traffic in our pod and see if um, Hubble can also pick that up and showcase that to us. OK, it looks like I don't have enough time. But yeah, let's see how that goes. See. OK, we have that running already. So we have the pods running. Um, so let's quickly expose our deployments. We've exposed, so cube still get SVC. OK, 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 everything is good. Then the next thing we need to do is to get our pod, one of our pods. Let's just get the first pod and see that, yeah, it's running. So let's execute. Let's go into that pod and make a HTTP request. So you're just going to copy this real quick, then paste this. Then let's curl, for example, google.com. So it's basically we've made a request. And if you check the Hubble server we have running, you can quickly see like this setting um, traffic has been picked up by um, the Hubble CLI. And if you go back to the Hubble UI, you can see the request we've made. So the app one made a request outside the cluster, which is world, and you can see it. You can also get more information, like oh, this is an, the traffic direction is egress, the, vex, the verdict is forwarded. So and then you can see setting the destination IP, and you can see all the labels. Now let's do let's apply a network policy that basically denies us from doing something like this. So. Um, so let's quickly apply a network policy. So all this network policy does is it denies, you know, um, okay. Let's see. Apply this F. Um. So this basically um, prevents us from making any form of outside, a request outside the uh, outside our cluster. So. It's basically just a Cilium network policy that denies all traffic, but also but allows the cube DNS because you know, we need to be able to resolve uh, DNS. So if I go back to that pod, uh, if I go back to that pod real quick, and I make the same request, you can see that we can make that request. And Hubble has also picked up that this particular um, network, um, this, this particular um, call is basically denied, right? And if we go back to the UI, you can see that a lot of it says dropped. So the verdict for this is because of the um, policy has denied it, you can see dropped. You can also see that the drop reason is because a policy denied it. And um, the traffic direction is also egress. So this is like this is like some of the capabilities that Hubble can give you. So um, quickly, let's enable Hubble to show us like the kind of request we've made. Because right now we are not getting like L7 info, so we need to like you know give tell Hubble to actually do that for us. So you can do that by applying a policy. Um, so let me just quickly get the policy real quick. So let me just let, let's first del let's delete the network policy. Okay. Um, okay. So we've deleted this network policy now. So now we can actually make certain requests back. So let's apply. Um, so let's give um, Hubble the L7 visibility capability. So if you go back to our pod and make another request, so if I call google.com, it takes like a couple of seconds, but you should be able to see like L7. Um, just give me one second. Takes a bit. 
And also, if you see this red line, it, this was because of the policy we applied earlier that shows that yeah, this particular components cannot, they can, we cannot make this particular um, request. So it basically also renders that for you to see. And um, if I should refresh this real quick and then see if I can make another request. Okay, oh, okay, I've not deleted the network policy you're supposed to allow. Okay, is it? Um. Okay, so if I go back and do this, should work now? Yes, okay. Okay, looks like it's still being denied. Okay, looks like, yeah, everything is good. It's a problem with demos, not every time, you know, it works. <laughs> but yeah, let's see how that goes. Okay, so if I call, um, so one minute, um, let's put, okay, uh, Okay, looks like something is something is wrong. <laughs> so let's debug it together. Let's find what's going on. So let's see, what did we do wrong? Sorry. Yeah, let's let's try calling the other pod. So let's see, curl HTTP up to the service, right? Uh, okay, our DNS resolver, the kubectl is not resolving this. Yeah, there's, there's no there's no visibility. There's no um, we've deleted the network policy, so this shouldn't be happening. But yeah, that's how demos go. Okay. Okay. Yeah, everything looks good. Get boards. Okay, so let's just you know let's make a request between the pods instead. Um, bash. Um, okay. Oh, to be. So let's take the pod IP and then the pod port. Sorry? Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. Ah, shit, sorry, sorry. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> okay, so that works. Thank you. Yeah, so. 
Um, if you see, if you see the request we've made, you can see that we made a GET request, and Hubble was able to um, quickly show us that like we made a GET request, and it can show um, things as much as like you know HTTP headers, etc. So basically, that's like um, the, at the base level what Hubble can do for you, uh, and um, yeah, that's basically the end of the talk. So let me just quickly. If you are interested in like doing this outside um, the the conference, you can quickly go to this link and you can do the talk. You can do the lab yourself. And then, if you're interested in any like you know learning more about Hubble, you can check like you know the official Selenium and Hubble documentation. We have some labs for MySilverLens. Um, we also have like certain talks that I personally recommend that you should see if you are like interested in Hubble. And like you know, thank you so much. And you know, thanks for coming. <laughs> Once again, sorry about the demo. Demos never work at conferences because <laughs> I checked this before I left. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for coming once again. <laughs>